DJI's Action 2 is among the best action cameras you can buy in 2022 and clearly a semi-professional video equipment which can capture some amazing angles and comes with awesome features. But after six months, does it live up to the expectations? Let's inspect! Hey, welcome! Good to meet you, Michael, my name, and what we do on the channel is to inspect fresh and cool tech, and I'm so happy, especially when it comes to action cameras, because finally, six months after it's been released, I'll, I'll share with you all the things I believe are meaningful about the DJI Action 2, something that has created a lot of hype, and suddenly this hype has dropped. Uh, I do believe this action camera is supposed to be some sort of hybrid between the portability and the lightweight construction of Insta360's Go 2 and the sturdiness and durability of the GoPro Hero 10, 9 and whatever series. Question is, did DJI manage to build this in a meaningful way? And of course, in this video, I highlight everything important, including all the major firmware updates for the last few months and let you know whether that's a worthy choice, but probably in advance, since spring is kicking in, I'm recording this in early May, and for most of the people living in the um, north part of the globe, yeah, that's pretty important time for buying your next action cameras, but whatever you choose between a GoPro, uh, Insta360 ONE RS or a Go 2, or apparently DJI Action 2, that's gonna be a pretty solid choice. Starting at $399 or Euro and sometimes discounted, it clearly is a nice idea for everyone that looks for a good quality, decent battery life and compact form factor. There are two different editions, by the way. What you see here is the dual screen combo, a very exciting vlogging-oriented edition, which gives an extra display, micro SD card slot and some more extras which I'm about to present you in a moment. So, just a quick unboxing, because there are a whole lot of videos showing you the unboxing process in many creative ways. As usual, DJI are great about educating you about the main strengths and the use of the accessories. The charging cable comes out first, also the spec strap-based mounts. This here is yet another magnetic mount, one of my favorites, because it represents a primitive ball head this is the main unit with the processor inside, it can work independently. And here's the second module, which is called the front touchscreen module. That's all of it. Nice and easy, it all feels done out of premium materials. The camera is made of aluminium, not quite sure whether DJI really wanted to go for such premium material because of the design. My assumption is that they have been fighting with heat disposal challenges, and this has been the reason to avoid plastic. Due to the frame, DJI Action 2 alone is rather heavy, 56 grams. This is twice more than the Insta360's Go 2, but also two times and a half lighter than GoPro Hero 10. At the secondary display and the score is almost even. Quick tour over the specs reveals much larger image sensor, 1x1.7 inches, undisclosed model, multi-core processor supporting up to 120 frames per second recording in 4K, aperture f by 2.8, 155 degrees field of view, inbuilt 580mAh battery in the main body, 22GB inbuilt storage, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, a large and vivid 1.7-inch touchscreen and the possibility to add optional DJI-branded accessories. It's always good to know the specs, but for most people it doesn't mean too much. Well, most people would notice a really awesome construction, the clicky mechanism. Uh, I would say pretty poor choice about materials, because I've dropped my camera twice on the ground and you already see the scuffs here. They look horrible. Now, <laughs> since we focus on the specs inside, uh, the image sensor is actually relatively big. One of the largest from the action cam industry, which is supposed to contribute for really good low light performance, because the larger the image sensor, the more light can reach to the sensor, therefore the better image quality, theoretically. But since over here, in the scale of this uh, sensor, we have better pixel density, I would expect better performance than the GoPro Hero 9 and 10. The other thing which remains undisclosed, just like the image sensor, is about the processor inside. Most likely it's an Umbrella-made processor, which is a bit controversial because it produces a lot of heat. There have been numerous videos about 
DJI Action 2 and overheating, which I think were a bit exaggerated, because for most people, you would either never notice this, or even if you do, that's going to very rarely happen. Still, even though most action cameras at some point do overheat, this is one of the champions about quickly reaching these temperature thresholds. There is no microSD slot for the main unit, which is really disappointing. 22GB would very quickly get full if you recorded the highest resolution and frame rates. And looking at the internal photos of the camera, I still believe DJI could have found 2 or 3 mm for a microSD slot. But then, probably, such a decision would have made the unit non-waterproof. So, I guess being able to dive without a case has been prioritized at some point. Kind of mixed feelings so far. Menus and navigation are very straightforward, responsiveness of the interface is remarkably good, and the touchscreen is big enough to comfortably let you do whatever you need to do. Swiping actions. They lead to the most interesting sections. You do have a lot of things to customize. Nicely, pro-grade features are integrated as well, like ISO control, shutter speed control, field of view adjustment. So many good and useful features are present. If you want to switch between the shooting modes, happens quickly and naturally, and maybe from all the strong size that DJI Action 2 has, this has become my favorite. If you're looking for an action camera with easy-to-use menus, fast scrolling, very stable firmware, this is in my opinion the best choice. Furthermore, DJI are famous for being consistent about firmware updates, therefore even if at some point some bugs appear or get discovered, they will likely get fixed soon enough. For the record, horizon balancing, 4K video leveling, a new steady image stabilization option, time-lapse low-power mode, new livestream features and many other smaller improvements, enhancements or fixes released just within the six months that DJI Action 2 has been together with us. In my opinion, this can mean two things. First of all, the good sides. Uh, of course, DJI are brilliant about providing timely, decent, stable firmware updates. The second thing is not so positive, and I believe DJI Action 2 had the same faith as some of the older DJI drones. They have been released half-baked. Instead of going for a more extensive firmware troubleshooting and bug fixing cycle, they just push it out on the market and expected all the issues to be discovered by the users, which definitely has led to frustration for quite many people. Footage. This is the funny part. User experience is these days so important that I managed to talk about the quality just now. Although you already have seen a bunch of examples of what DJI Action 2 is capable of. In its standard package, DJI's camera is wider than both GoPro and Insta360 ONE RS, the 4K edition. There is an extra mod that you can buy for GoPro and make it wider, but good to highlight that DJI's device is capturing more out of the box. Stabilization. Crazy good! You're going to never really need a gimbal with this action camera, and it is tuned almost to perfection. DJI have also released the so-called steady mode, which in my opinion looks a lot more natural than rock steady because there is no such weird looking distortion correction in the edges. There also is the famous, from the GoPro series, horizon leveling, where even if you tilt the camera to 45 degrees, it will compensate the movement and will keep the horizon line. So even if you give the camera to your kid to shoot for a moment, it's probably gonna look alright. Colors, excellent. However, I did notice white balance hunting, an issue I've had many times with the DJI Osmo Action 1. It rarely happens, but I've seen it. Perhaps the greatest strength of DJI Action 2 is the low light performance. It has much larger image sensor than GoPro Hero 10, with smaller pixel density which converts into very detailed, less noisy and sharper nighttime footage. I would avoid using an action camera for low light scenes in general, but sometimes there is no other way, so if I need to pick an action camera for low light good performance, I would think of both DJI Action 2 and Insta360 ONE RS prior to getting a GoPro. Larger sensor also means better dynamic range, and HDR here is superb. Photos are also good, optically and performance-wise, you will hardly find reasons to criticize DJI Action 2. Although, let me try. Sound? Not that great. The chest mount? Almost useless, especially when wearing on thin clothes like t-shirts. The camera is just too heavy. 
overheating, non-replaceable battery, CPU-intensive video codec, limited amount of accessories and quite an expensive price, especially if you need a dual-screen combo. So, if we have to be entirely honest, it looks like DJI made an attempt to build a modular camera, probably with the hope to make it easily upgradable in the future by replacing just one component at a time, something similar to what Insta360 have achieved with their R series, with the RS being the latest one. But I think it was a rather unhealthy solution and I don't think they're going to make a new generation out of that or if they do, it's going to have a different fall factor because so far this I, I can't really call a huge success because, well, even if you take the standalone unit, the main unit, it's a lot heavier than the Go 2. Yes, it does support 4K, 120 frames per second, but how long does it take until the camera overheats? Also, we have limited storage inside. It's not expandable through SD card. You need another mod in order to add extra expandable storage. And this mod immediately transforms the camera into a non-waterproof device, which um, is not favorable for people who go and do some water sports or going to the mountain and do some skiing and a lot of other drawbacks like the incompatibility with GoPro modules. I mean, mounts uh, and holders and uh, tripods and such kind of stuff. Yes, you can attach some of the DJI certified mods and there is a quarter range mount, but still most of the GoPro accessories would not be very nicely compatible. So in the end, because of this design, this cool-looking modular design, but the poor choice of materials, the overheating issues, and some other things, I still would stay with GoPro or Insta360 ONE RS as a main action camera. Especially for slow motion, GoPro is unbeaten. But if you don't care about any of these, and you're fans of the color science of DJI, and you're fans of the optics, the really awesome image quality and um, the rather okay battery life and the expandability, you know, especially for vlogging, this is a pretty awesome setup. Yeah, I can still recommend the DJI Action 2, especially if you get it at a nicely discounted price. And if there is such an opportunity, then it's definitely linked somewhere in the video description. And thank you very much for watching this episode till the end, hopefully useful. And that's been a good summary about how the DJI Action 2 trends in the last six months. If you have something to add, please comment down below for some questions I'll be available. And as usual, look forward to seeing you in our next episode. I'm Michael, wish you a fantastic day. Bye!